Shalom, Shalom, Akiyam. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwilash. I would also like to give a double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. I would also like to say peace and salutations to the hopeful elect scattered throughout all four corners of this earth. It's just Bayan back again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And I just wanted to get into a quick lesson that was actually inspired um, by a link uh, the beloved head of the camp, Aaron, uh, sent on the chat. Um, by a brother, by the beloved brother over at uh, his, his, his uh, YouTube, his GMS, Get This Work. And um, he made a video titled, Prepare to Be Demonized. And Lord willing, I'll leave that video um, in the description box. I'll leave a link to that video in the description box. But, um, you know, I was meditating through the spirit, you know, you know what Yahweh what Bashim Yahweh Shai wanted me to bring out. You know, I didn't really have anything to go into. And then, you know, when this brother sent this link, you know, the spirit started moving. And I remember, um, I remember at camp this weekend, you know, the brother had said something real heavy uh, going into uh, persecution. And, you know, being, that's, I mean, this is biblical. That's, that's the reality. Persecution is going to come, you know, the only way we're going to be able to enter into uh, the kingdom of heaven is through that straight gate. You know, we're all going to, you know, starting with the men of the Lord down to the believers, men, women, and children, we're going to be persecuted. I mean, this is spoken of in pretty good detail in Second Ezra, uh, the 16th chapter, you know, around verses 68 down. You know, but it goes on to say, then it, then it will be known who am I chosen. You know, so through this persecution, through going through this fire, you know, the chosen uh, <laughs> are going to come into fruition. You know, because scripture says many are called, but few are chosen. You know, because that persecution is going to going to try. It's going to try, you know, everyone's work. You know, and ultimately, at the end of the day. Only that precious gold, that fine gold, is going to be left standing, which is the elect. You know, Lord willing, we're part of that precious number. You know, but I just wanted to get into this lesson real quick going into, uh, you know, persecution and Lord willing, get into an article um, showing the reality of that. You know, as we move closer and closer uh, to the coming of the day of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. So through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, what I wanted to do is I want to show this clip first from camp, and then we'll go right into the scriptures. Right, because you walk right by these things. Uh, You've seen us. And, and it's like that movie, National Treasure. Once they found that treasure, they want, the government was after them. Right. They didn't want them in that, with that possession. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, and that's exactly how it is. Persecution. And that's why, hey, that's why we're going to be, we going to, hey, a lot of us, uh, all of us right here might be killed for this. Right. But that's just the way it's going to be. Right, because it's written in that too. That's how the movie goes. Hey, and we don't, hey, hey, what the elders say the other day, we don't shun to declare the whole gospel. That's right, right. So we tell you all of everything in there. We're not just telling you the good, hey, uh, the good things. Hey, right, we're telling everything. Right, hey, we might die for this. That's right. Okay, but that's a, hey, that's a, that's a good thing to do, to die for the Lord. Okay, because there's no better friend to have than the Lord. That's right. All right? And that's facts. You know, and you heard the brother say, you know, we all might die for this thing, you know, as as a, as in us, you know, us four there you seen before you, you know, which that, that hey, that's a reality. You know, we, you know, our lot, you know, may be to be a mortar. You know, and then you heard the brother Banayam mention, um, he was referencing a movie, um, you know, going into... You know, uh, pretty much in comparison to this, to this testimony. You know, 
<laughs> we're on the crosshairs of the government. Why? Because we have this testimony of Yahweh Shai. But this testimony is what's going <laughs> to be key to our salvation. Lord willing, if we strive into the end. And, and this is this is all scriptural. This is all, you know, can be proven. Let's get this in Revelation. You know, this is why our elders and apostles tell us, you know, the elders and apostles of Great Millstone on down, you know, tell us, they say often, um, you know, understand what you're involved in. You know, because this truth is deadly serious. And there's a certain walk we have to walk in order to, you know, have that protection from the Lord. You know, have those angels encamping around us. We have to be obedient. You know? We have to walk a righteous path to the best of our ability. You know, the book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 17, it reads, And the dragon was wroth with the woman who's the dragon. Evil E. Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Right, consisting of uh, the NATO and the EU, right? This revived Roman Empire. That's the dragon, right? And the woman, right? The dragon was wroth with the woman, which is Israel, man. Scripture goes into how uh, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai has likened Zion to a uh, comely and delicate woman, man. Right? And went to make war with the remnant. Of her seed, which consists of the elect. You see, those that have disconnected from the ways of Babylon and the ways of evil E. Okay? Those that are leaning on their power, right? Our power, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. As a matter of fact, let me get a quick precept. This is what's making us an enemy of the state, right? Isaiah chapter 10. In verse 20, and it reads, and it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel. And remember, remnant means the remainder, the leftover, the elect. And such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them. And who smote us? First and foremost, evil E. Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, and the rest of these heathen nations as well. You know, they've smote us, right? But primarily evil E, you know, being that he is uh, the God of this world. You see, he's the power of this world. We're living in the time of Esau. As it's written in 2 Ezra 6 and 9, Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. And such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. You see, the elect, Lord willing, with part of that precious number, are going to stay upon Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shai in truth. And we believe wholeheartedly that we're living in the time of that generation, man. We believe this wholeheartedly. I mean, the prophecies are speaking loud and clear. They're jumping off the pages. From evil E being um, exposed for who he is, you know, for him being. Um, What's that? Second Thessalonians. The wicked should be revealed. <laughs> right? The wicked's being revealed, man. Evil E. Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Jake's waking up. Right? And these prophecies are coming to pass. Giving credence to we're being at the end. We're at the end of this thing. But there's gonna come a there's gonna come a lot of turmoil. There's gonna come a lot of persecution. There's gonna come a lot of heartache in efforts to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know, we're about to enter into that straight gate. 
Let's go back to Revelations 12. Let's continue on. I'm going to start from the top. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Why, Lord? Which keep the commandments of Yahweh and have the testimony of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. You see? What's the testimony? The evidence, the witness, man. This is who this devil truly wants. This is who he has his scopeo on. You know, and this is the reality of this thing. You know, and this is this is the bitter. This is the bitter of the truth. You know? When Jake first comes into this thing, you know, they're getting they're getting doused with the with the sweet, you know, with the honey. You know, but when that bitter, you know, when that, when that bitter has to be spoken about, or when the reality of the bitter, you know, hits them in their face, they start being um tested, you know, chastised, the Lord starts putting pressure on them, starts making things more difficult for them, allows Satan to touch them. From time to time, you know, Jake, Jake can't take it. But that's the separation between the, the elect and the non-elect. Lord willing, we're part of that precious number. Lord willing, we're part of the elect. And we're able to endure, you know, our trials. You know, because they're coming. You know, it's going to get much more difficult. And ultimately, that hour of temptation, you know, is going to rest upon all of us, man. But the beautiful thing about it is that it's written, you know, that, you know, we get the victory, man. We get the victory through Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. As a matter of fact, let's get this. Let's jump to Revelation 20 real quick. I'm going to grab an article real quick as well, but let me grab this first. The book of Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4 and it reads, right? And this is what John the Revelator saw, man, right? And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai, right? That witness goes into what? The testimony. The witness goes into the testimony, man. As a matter of fact, let's go back. Matter of fact, let's not go back. Let's just go here. Edification. Let's just get it real quick. Strong's G, 3141, Marturia, Marturia. Right, and it goes into mortar, right? Which goes into, uh, let's go up here, Strong's Info, right? Evidence given, judicially or genitive case, right? Record, report, testimony, witness. See, that testimony goes into witness. <laughs> you see that? That's why when we, when we go back to Revelation 20, see, those that were beheaded had what? Let's read it again from the top. The book of Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4, and it reads, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai, see? And for the word of Yahweh, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his M-A-R-K upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Hamashiach a thousand years. You see that? 
And that thousand years goes into the period of the kingdom being erected. And these heathen, right, you heathen being in captivity. Starting with Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. And that's the reality of this thing. See? But those, <laughs> the beautiful thing about it, those that are going to be mourned, those that are going to be beheaded, they're going to reign with Yahweh. Those are, that's automatic. See? That's why scripture says to strive for the truth until death and the Lord shall fight for thee. See, we're dealing with the father of spirits, man. Through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, through Yahweh Shai, there's no such thing as death, man. Through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's why scripture says, fear not him that can kill the body. But fear him that can kill body and soul. And the phone chimed in. See? Our power is the father of spirits, man. Those that those that are beheaded for the test for the witness for the testimony, that's the elect. And that's why when you go to First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, um, Lord willing, I, I want to get this article, but um, let me just go get that real quick because they'll bring it together. First Thessalonians four. And there's those of the elect that have already passed away, if I may, if I may add, you know, that are locked in. Uh, let me see. The book of First Thessalonians, chapter 4, and verse 13, it reads, But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not. not you know, that asleep is what? A dead, supposedly. Right? Because there's really no such thing as death. Scripture says every three to four generations, you come back, man. Even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Yahweh Shai died and rose again, right? The resurrection. We believe in the resurrection. See, we qualify to hope. For if we believe that Yahweh Shai died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahweh Shai will, will Yahweh bring with him. See, those that believe, that's the elect. The, only the elect is going to believe in the resurrection. <laughs> right? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. That we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. See, there's elect members already uh, in, in, the, in the heavens, man, with the Lord, with Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And of course, during the throughout the time of persecution, there's going to be elect members that are going to be, you know, being sent back to the spiritual realm. Just to be the first on the chariot, as we're going to read here. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of Yahweh, and the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. You see, so those that died in Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, are going to be risen up first. And then what's going to happen after that? Then we which are alive, and remain shall be caught up together. Revelations 11, right? Come up hither. See? Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. In the cloud. That word clouds right there, that's a hard saying for the chariots, man. To meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord, right? We're going to go into that, the everlasting <laughs> kingdom, man. The, 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 the never-ending rulership. 
that never in the movie show. Let me get this. I'm going to get the article. And it's just, it's the spirit. Let's just get this. I had a few priests I don't want to get into, and the spirit is just moving me to go get this. That's the spirit. Right? Go willing, we'll get the article right after this. I must be allowed to get this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 60 and verse 21. Thy people also should be all righteous. And this is in the kingdom. And remember, pursuant to wisdom of Solomon, I believe that's the first chapter. Um, it says, uh, righteousness is immortal. <laughs> you see, so this is going into immortality right here, man. Israel is going to be all righteous, immortal, man. Thy people also should be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. That's what I wanted. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Right. How about Shemiel Shai is going to be glorified in this day, man? The Lord's not doing this for our sakes. He's doing this for his great name's sake, man. This is why I say the water Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Kahalayim La Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. The water, you know, for Allah and myself, you know, and you beloved Akiyam and Akwaf to be able to qualify the hope. Right? Let's get this article. Right? This is from uh, The Insider. Right? And it's dated February 14th, uh, 2023. Right, and the title reads, Trump has been asking his advisors questions like, what do you think of firing squads when planning his campaign messaging Rolling Stone, right? So check this out. Sources tell Rolling Stone, Trump has been talking about how executions could fit in campaign messaging. Trump asking advisors about bringing back the firing squad and the use of guillotines, sources said. Sources also told Rolling Stone that Trump has discussed the idea of group executions. You see that? <laughs> and you know they got their eyes on the servants, the prophets. And look what's in there. Guillotine. What's a guillotine used for? They decapitate you, man. Okay? And this is biblical. Revelations 20. John the Revelator seen those that have been beheaded. Right? And through the spirit, we believe that this is modern day Nero, man. Starting with the elders and apostles on down have <laughs> brought that out. And it's looking like it's uh becoming more and more of a reality that that's the case. Let's get this, let's get a little bit of this article and get back into the scriptures, right? Former president Donald Trump has been asking advisors what they think of bringing back firing squads and other banned execution methods, Rolling Stone reports. Rolling Stone, Rolling Stone spoke to three anonymous sources about the campaign-related conversations Trump has, had, Trump has been having with his associates. According to these sources, Trump has on, so like it, Trump has on more than one occasion asked his aides questions like, what do you think of firing squads? Two Rolling Stone sources say Trump has had discussions with his advisors <clears throat> about everything from bringing back group executions to using banned execution methods like the guillotine, man. And this is the reality of the time to come. The straight, that straight gate. <laughs> and, 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 but the Lord said, Yahweh Shai said, strive to enter in at the straight gate, man. Fight to enter in at the straight gate. See? Understanding what? This is the only way. It's the only way, man. As a matter of fact, let's let's get this real quick. What's that? I believe that was Luke 13. Let's, let's get this real quick. Let's get Matthew. Let's get Matthew 7. Yeah, let's get this. Matthew 7 and 13, right? And this, these are the words of our Lord Yahweh Shai, right? Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way. What's a straight? A position, a position of difficulty. 
You see? But the kingdom of heaven is after that. See, that's that wide, man. That leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in their right. Right? Because many are not going to make it. Many are not going to make it, man. Second Ezra, uh, what's that? Nine. I forgot what verse, but I know what second Ezra is the ninth chapter goes into how um, those that should be saved is, is likened unto a, a drop from a wave, man. Let's continue on. Let's get a little more. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. See the kingdom, the wide. And we can also get that in um, Second Ezra, the seventh chapter. Lord willing, we'll get that too, right? And few there be that find it. See, only the elect is going to find it. Only the elect is going to be able to strive and 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 endure until the end, regardless of how the cookie crumbles, man. Hey, Lord willing, we'll pile the pre Lord willing, we'll pile that precious number. Let's get a little more of that article. Um, a third source who spoke to Rolling Stone said Trump has also privately considered if it would be possible to launch an aid campaign to promote these execution methods, man. This ad campaign would involve airing footage from the executions, the sources said, you see. Hey, this thing's about to get deadly serious, man. Real quick. Real quick. Hey, but again, this is what's required. Like I quoted earlier through the spirit, like Luke 13, how wish I say what? Strive to enter in at the straight gate, man. <laughs> Let's get these scriptures. That's pretty much it on the article. I'll leave it in the description box, Lord willing. There's a bit more in there, you know, but that's pretty much the point. These scriptures is what we got to get. All right, that's the that's the point. You know that <laughs> I mean how much more clearer can it get? Right, let's get this. Let's get that second Ezra 7. Let's start um let's start at verse 6 and it reads There is also another thing. A city is built, and I believe um the angel Uriel was speaking to um Ezra's, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's Uriel, right? There is also another thing. A city is built it and set upon a broad field and it's full of all good things, right? And that city is the kingdom of heaven, man. The entrance, the entrance thereof, oh, there's the beloved elder right there, right? The entrance thereof is narrow, and is set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. See? Straight gate position the difficulty. Danger all around. And on only and one only path between them both. See, you gotta go you gotta go through it. Even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. See? We're all going to have to walk that fine line, man. We're all going to have to face that position of difficulty, man, in order to enter in to the kingdom of heaven, man. And this is why scripture says, blessed and holy is he that take part in the first resurrection, man. And Lord willing, we'll get that. Lord willing, we'll close out with that. Right? If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? Question mark, right? It's, it, 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 there's no way around it. This, again, I'll say it again. This is why the elders and apostles of Great Millstone on down say, understand what you're involved in. This truth is deadly serious. 
You have to understand what the will of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai is. You know? So if we do have to, you know, fill that lot of being a mortal, hey, we understand these things. This is why Isaiah 33 and 6 says what? Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. See, we're going to be stable in these times in the mind. Right? In the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure, man. Let's continue on. And I said it, and I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. You see, starting with the elect. Because we know two-thirds ain't going to make it. Two-thirds are not going to make it. Two-thirds are going to get caught up in the wrath of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. But like we quoted earlier, blessed and holy is he. Let's close out here. Excuse me, Salakia. Let's close out here. Revelation 20. The book of Revelation chapter 20. And verse 6, and it reads, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On the second death have no power. What's the second death? Those missiles, man. The day of doom. That thermonuclear fallout. The third woe. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is going to cleanse this place with fire. He did it the first time with water. See? The evil is sown, but the destruction has not yet come. It's coming, though. And the phone chimed in. But they shall be priests. And, uh, so I care. But they shall be priests of Yahweh. And of Hamashiach. And shall reign with him a thousand years, man. Oh, man. <laughs> that is cold. And that thousand years, again, it's not going into um, Salakia. That thousand years is going into that thousand year period of you heathen being in subjection to Yasha Allah. You see? And then from there, what? Evil E is gonna have to <laughs> is gonna have to take part in that Obadiah 1 and 18. As it's written, man. You know, because again, to take part in that first resurrection is something that pff, man. You can't even you can't even imagine. You know, we're going to see our enemies in subjection. You know, we're going to see the kingdom of heaven being erected by the hands of these heathen. You know, they're going to build up our walls. Matter of fact, let's get this. Let's go back to the book of Isaiah chapter 60. Um, let's see. Matter of fact, let me start at verse 1 and jump down. The book of Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 and it reads, Arise, shine, for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. That's another thing. We're coming into our glory this time. See, we're not going to, we're not going to uh, die and come back into and be born back into captivity. No. We're coming into our glory this time around, man. Let's jump down. Let's get, let's start at verse 9. Verse 10 is my point. Surely the isles shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from far. And I believe Tarshish, when you look that up on the uh, biblical map, that's uh, in, this, in the region of Spain, I believe. To bring thy sons from far, giving credence that were scattered all over the place, man. Their silver and their gold with them unto the name of the Lord thy power and to the Holy One of Israel. 
because he hath glorified thee. Man, we're coming into our glory, Akiyam and Akwaf. We just got to get through this straight gate. Hey, if we're part of the elect, we will. See, the elect is going to be able to endure until the end. Because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to guide us and walk us through this straight gate, man. What's that? Revelations 3 and 10. Because you kept the word of my patience, I will keep you from the hour of temptation. This is going to be a different spirit. This is going to be a, a, a bold spirit on those of the elect throughout these times of persecution, man. Hey, Lord willing, we're part of that precious number. Let's get this. And here's the point. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, man. And their king shall minister unto thee, man. Well, they're going to be serving us, man. The kings of this world are going to be serving us in the kingdom to come. Right? For my wrath, for in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. And that's what we're coming into. We're coming into complete favor of the Lord. The Lord is going to have complete favor for us, man. And he's showing us a form of favor now by giving us his word, by giving us his truth, which is the greatest act of mercy he could give us on this side. You know, but in the kingdom of heaven, hey, he's, hey it, it, it's over with. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to be completely uh, 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 rocking with us, man. He's going to cast all of our sins into the ocean, into the depths of the sea, man. And it's going to be the time with Jacob. It's going to be the time of Jacob. And you heathen nation is going to know firsthand what it's like to be a footstool, man. And there's nothing you're going to be able to do about it, man, because the power of all heaven and all earth, okay, is going to put you in your rightful lot. And there's nothing you're going to be able to do about it. Just like how there was nothing we wait. That's just like how there's nothing we can do throughout the course of our captivities. There was nothing the so-called Negro, Latino, and Native American could do. Why? Because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai put us in this position because of our transgressions. See, but in the eon to come, it's gonna be a, it's gonna it's gonna be flipped right. Everything's gonna be flipped right side up. Right now, everything's upside down. It's gonna get flipped right side up. In the nation of Israel. Jacob is going to be on top. And you heathen nations are going to be on the bottom. But we just got to get through this straight gate first. You know, Akiyam and Akwaf. You know, Lord willing, we're part of that precious number. And we're able to endure until the end. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak, Wadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. Lord willing, you Akiyam and Akwaf were edified. Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Kal Halalim La Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakak Wadash. Shalom.